So what are you going to do when you, you get to Ecuador and you get moved to Monta and you need health care, all of a sudden you need a doctor, you get sick, you catch a cold or something, what are you going to do? You're going to call this girl right here, this is Dr. Gladys Garcia. And I finally got her to sit down with me to answer some questions that you people sent in. And as soon as I come back, we're going to get started. Hey! Oh, Rocket Chick Rogers. Hello there. All right, so here we are. This is Dr. Gladys Garcia. And Hello. thanks so much for agreeing to finally sit down and take the time to, Thank you for having to, me. to talk. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So my name is Gladys Garcia, and I was born and raised here in Manta from Manabí, Ecuador. I study in the ULAM University, which is our local university, and I did my education for about seven years. After that, I started to work for the government. I worked for two years in a primary care center in the emergency room, and after that, I applied for the hospital, the main hospital here, the Rodriguez Zambrano Hospital, and I used to be a resident in the emergency room for almost four years. After that, light took me to the path that I started working with expats. And I've been doing that for the last two years. So I have um, about eight years working like a doctor. So you actually, you, you cater to expats, but you also have uh, Ecuadorian patients yeah, as well? Yeah, my so. private practice is open for every patient who needs my assistance. But mostly my clients are expats because it's pure coincidentally, yeah. but actually I'm open for all crowd. Okay, all right. And you make house calls. Yeah, I make house calls, <laughs> that's the way I work. That's why a lot of people have a hard time believing that, but especially when I first got here and I told them that the first time I called you, I called you on WhatsApp and you responded and you came to my apartment. I actually went looking, I went to your address on your card. Yes. Well, we went looking for it, we couldn't find it. I ended up going to Top Dental's office and getting Jennifer to call you. And then that's basically when you told her to tell me to get back home, <laughs> that you were on your way <laughs> to here and you came to my apartment. So anyway, we got a lot of questions, and I don't know if we're going to be able to get to all of these questions, but we're going to do the best we can, and I'm going to start with the very first one from Glenn Noel. Uh, and if I mis mispronounce anybody's name, please forgive me. Mm -hmm. So it's just the way it goes, okay? But anyway, my question for Dr. Garcia is, I have, how do you pronounce that? Ker Keratoconus? Ker Keratoconus. It's an ophthalmological condition, yeah. Okay, and therefore use scleral lenses yes so there are lenses are these lenses also available in Ecuador and are the cost of these lenses covered by IESS okay so we have several uh, ophthalmologists that I can refer you uh, basically responding to what the patient is asking mm -hmm. and usually this type of practice is performed by a specialist we have ISS, yes, it's uh, the government insurance for people who work in the public system or private system, but not always they are fully prepared to attend all these specialist conditions. So what I can do in this case to help you more is I can give you a contact from somebody to the IESS who can provide you more personalized information. Okay. We have convenience with private um, institutions, but if you want something more deeper, it would be better if you get access through the specialist clinic related with the eyes, doctor specialist in eyes, because they used to have like uh, the technology and equipment, it's highly much mm -hmm. better okay. speaking. Okay, all right, so uh, Glenn and everybody else that's watching this, I'm gonna put uh, Dr. Garcia's contact information, your WhatsApp number, yeah. your email. Sure. Also, uh, can I put your Facebook page on yes, there? Yes, okay, of course. I'm gonna put all that in the description. Feel free to contact her when you need some of the details about some of these answers that, uh, that maybe, you know, that, well, like you said, you have more information that we're not gonna cover 
here in the, the interview. So question number two, futuro expat, futuro expat. Is there a sleep clinic in Monta for diagnosis of OSA, obstructive sleep apnea, for treatment of OSA or ResMed, AutoSat, CPAP machines, and supplies available? Are those available? Are you know what you know what he's talking about? Yes. Okay. Is that available here? We have the specialists, they used to manage these diseases. Mm -hmm. They cover this type of assistance. But we don't have a sleep apnea clinic per se here. Okay. But we have a very good one in Quito that I used to refer for my patients who have prescriptions for the CPAP machine or they have sleep apnea and they need a polysonography, which is the test we mm -hmm. do. We usually do exactly for diagnose you the level, the compromise, yeah. and to determine the treatment. So you can have access to the specialist, but if you want something like a clinic, you can go to Quito, and I can also provide you guys the contact of the specialists who perform these treatments. Okay. But IESS, again, they had a lot of coverage, but it's not always in Manta. They used to refer patients to the big cities to solve all these most complex cases. Yeah, yeah. But again, with a contact inside the ISS, we can tell you for sure if you're going to be covered for this or not. Okay. All right, Kel, the last part of his question is, is diagnosis and treatment of OSA covered by IESS, and I think you pretty much just answered that. Yeah, I just it might to be. Know. Yeah, it might be partially covered, and it also exists the chance that they might not. Okay. Yeah. Right. I happen to have a neighbor across the street, an expat, that has one of these machines, and he uses it every night. Yeah. Yeah. So. So that's why I was referring about, for example, if you have a high percentage mm -hmm. that you really need the CPAP machine to survive. Yeah. So it's different that you're using it partially or you're not using it yet. Yeah. Okay, next question. Keith. Hi, Keith. With private insurance, do the hospitals where she, talking about you, are able to practice have private rooms for stays when having any kind of surgery? So in other words, he said, do they have private rooms in the hospitals? Okay, if it's public hospitals, no, because they have general rooms and you have to share the room with at least 12 people more. It right. would be women or men, because they usually are separate according to gender. Mm -hmm. If you go to a clinic, you might find that option, but it's going to cost you more money. Yeah. And it's not going to be all the time, because it, it's, it will be, you know, according to the available yeah. of the place. Yeah. What about private hospitals? Private hospital, they got the option. Okay. Right. Yeah. But like I said before, that depends how, yeah. if you have the chance to use a private room or if you have to share at least with somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Joseph Adair says, hey, Don, any issues with seasonal or environmental issues in Monte or Cuenca? That's what we were talking about yes. before we started. And I was going to say, there's really only kind of two kind of seasons here. Kind yeah. Of, kind of like winter and kind of like summertime. But for the locals, summer's hot here. But to me, mm -hmm. I, I we got you know, like know. <laughs> we got like a summer that looks more like a winter. Yeah. <laughs> because it's very rainy and humid. Yeah. And when we change that weather for the the part of the year when she's kind of coldy, mm -hmm. so you can have. Uh, seasonal flus, yeah. you know, like. And you were saying um, something about the mosquitoes. Uh, yeah, bing, bing. and at uh, the end of the year, maybe in December, in between December and maybe February, March, we used to have a lot of cases from dengue, chikungunya, and Zika mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the collections of the water in the street yeah. is not the right one. And that uh, brings a lot of mosquitoes, a lot of flies. So mm -hmm. we got the Aedes aegyptus, which is the mosquito, who transmit is the reservoir of this okay. disease. So he transmit the um, the virus. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there are seasonal differences, health wise. I mean, because I know that when I came here last year, the first time I called you, I had a major cold. Yes. And then. 
here just recently I called you and I had I didn't have a major cold, I had a sore throat. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah. yeah. Which, by it the was way, an upper gone. respiratory infection, yeah. which is very often here. Yeah, would, 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 would you say that was seasonal? At that point, it wasn't, because mm -hmm. we were in a determinate uh, weather. It was, in, it was not a changing of weather, okay. exactly. But let's say that we are ending the heating time, you know, mm -hmm. the time when you have a lot of hot yeah. and sweating, and then like one day to the other, it's coldy. So yeah. it, it could happen more, right. uh, more common this diseases though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, now the next question, Tim and Tracy, I hear from Tim and Tracy often, they're very nice people. Uh, our question is for the good doctor. Are prescriptions required for most medications or can they simply be provided by a pharmacist? That's a great question. Yeah, it's a good question because uh, there is medication that you can buy over the counter, but there is very basic medication. Mm -hmm. For example, um, supplements, vitamins, um, maybe medication for fever, but very basic. Mm -hmm. But if you have any infection and you need antibiotics, you really need a prescription for a doctor. Okay. That's what the law says here. And um, there must be, the pharmacist must not sell the medication without a prescription. Okay. And if it's a medication to sleep or for depression, you need a special prescription. It's a blue paper which is provided for the government and not every doctor can make the prescription you have to you need to have a special license to prescribe those medications okay right. mm -hmm. okay so i know that like my blood pressure medicine you wrote a prescription for it yes and which, by the way, I found a 28-day supply for six dollars and fifteen cents. Yeah, usually uh, our medications are, are cheaper. Yeah. We've got a lot, lot of options: cheaper yeah. and expensive, and in the middle one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bill Eagle 51 says, "Not this is question number seven. Not sure if this is a healthcare question, but I did work for DOT, Department of Defense, and have." I think that's what that means, I'm pretty sure. And have health insurance that covers me all over the world. But I still need to buy Ecuadorian health insurance. Also, if I needed a medical specialist in Ecuador, how long would it take me to see one? I had spine issues and I and would need to travel far to see a specialist. All right, and would I need to travel far to see a specialist? That's probably another one of those questions where if it's not here, there'll probably be one in keto. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, well, medicine have specialists and specialists down the specialists. So mm -hmm. it means that they had a, a special degree or certification in something else more than the general, spe mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, that part of the medicine. For example, if you're a cardiologist, you make a special degree in catheterisms or procedures mm -hmm. that a regular cardiologist would not have. So that is a type of a specialist you might not find here and you will find in the big cities like Guayaquil, Quito, and this is just an example. Yeah. Right now we have a very big clinic, a, a cardiovascular clinic, when you got chances to have that accurate attention mm -hmm. but it's not in all the specialties so mm -hmm. for a couple ones you might need to go to Quito or Cuenca or Guayaquil but it's not that far away for example Guayaquil it's about three hours maybe four hours if you go in a car right and if you want to go to Quito you can take a you know a plane and you will be there about 40 minutes yeah and Cuenca is like, if you go in a car, it will be maybe like eight seven, hours. eight hours. So it's not that much mm -hmm. and it's accessible for the people. Right. And about what he, he was talking about, the special insurance that he has uh, for the Ministry of Defense, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it, that will depend about the policies of the insurance you have, because in, in that policies are include our country you you will be able to use, but not permanently. It will be for such an amount of time. Yeah. But if you want to use our uh, insurance here, you have to hire them here. 
with an insurance company, yeah. with brokers, what is the name of the, you, we call people who sell insurance here. Yeah. Yeah, so it's different. If you want to apply to be just for a while here, if you want to be permanently, it's going to be a different uh, conditions that you might to right. require. Okay. Mark in Asia said Nibilet. Nib Nibilet? Nibilet. May I, do they have it and do you know the cost? Yeah, we have that medication and I will forward you the costs okay. and also the presentation. So uh, that person will have exactly. Yeah the price and how many pills they will get with that price. Okay. So Mark, uh, Mark and Asia, send her an email and you'll, when you get a chance, you'll answer it. Mm -hmm. As far as the cost, okay? <laughs> now question number nine, we're moving right along. John Fincher, Don, we just saw Dr. Garcia today. It seems we picked up parasites. Maybe she could talk a little bit about what expats can do to avoid food and waterborne illness in Ecuador. Drink beer, that beer and wine, that'll work, right? Mm, maybe. Okay, all right, Dr. Garcia is a very <laughs> thorough and engaging doctor. Back Thank home, you. could learn a few things from her and she makes house calls. So, I know, it's. A, I, I say drink beer and wine, don't drink water. Do you need to catch that? No. Okay, all right, so, next question. Robert Wright, Don, my only medical issue is small fiber neuropathy. Otherwise, my docs say I am a healthy old man. Try to take care of my health as well. My question is how familiar and common does she, Dr. Garcia, see Ecuadorians contract neuropathy? My feeling opinion is it runs more rampant in the States due to the environment. Do they prescribe gaba, gabapentin? gabapentin in Ecuador? Also, how helpful is it to bring your medical records for once you obtain a PCP, primary care physician? So, okay, so right, that's a lot of questions there. Yeah, yeah. but mm -hmm. it's kind of easy to answer because oh, the neuropathy is uh, often conditioned here and it's more related with people with diabetes, mm -hmm. part of the complication of the diabetes. In this population, I'm talking about Ecuador and our cultural and our epidemiological conditions. I mean what we have here, like chronic conditions. But we also have different other types of neuropathies. In this case, we are familiar with the gabapentin. It's a medication that used to be prescribed for this condition. And doctors who manage this neuropathy, they are usually a neurologist and endocrinologists or diabetologists according what other diseases are related with this condition. Okay. And yeah, it's very helpful if you bring your medical history because I will give a clue to the doctor about what you've been through, what the medical history on your family. Actually, for me, in my private practice, is highly important, and you know that because you've been my mm -hmm. patient for so long, right. that I make a very exclusive and extended interview and I ask about everything because, because it's, that's considered like 60 or 70% of the primary diagnosis, the interview that you do with the patient in internal medicine, it's very useful to have this tool to diagnose and take the patient to the right way. Right. So like we got um, this problem with the language because people here in Manta, they don't used to have the English like a second language. So bring your medical history here will help a lot of the physician because he or she can translate all the script and treat the patient with all the information right. need. Okay, I hope that helps. So, Rafael Solorzano. Solorzano? Solorzano, yeah. yeah. Can I get a prescription with four or five refills? Can I tell the doctor which antidepressant is the one that I want? Well, if you have a previous diagnosis for a psychiatrist or a psychologist and you bring that history for me and I know that you are under control with that medication exclusively, maybe I can help you to refill the prescription. But that's not legally and ethical exactly because every single patient are different and where is the knowledge? and the personalization to the attention if you just prescribe a medication and order what the patient requires. And with this, I'm not saying that the patient has not the right to suggest things. It's that 
medicine doesn't work that way exactly but we always are open to help the patient in some way that he can feel that he's having the attention and the care that the patient needs and majorly the physicians the psychiatrists and the psychologists they will evaluate you and they will talk about you about what medication you should receive because there's not always a, on our hands the same medication that you maybe are taking in the US or outside we're not always have the same drugs here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. next question uh, Stacy McDermott wants to know we well she said we will be moving to Ecuador in about one to two months. Probably will be in Monta or Salinas area. What type of diabetic medicine do they offer down in Ecuador? Do they offer Ozempic or Trulicity? You see these ads on TV all the time in the States. Or some type of semi-glutide? Semi-glutide? Yeah. Semi-glutide, yeah. And is it very expensive? Well, we offer a different types of medication for diabetes, uh, oral medication, insulin, subcutaneous, and also this uh, latest generation medication, and we have it. And if you can contact me um, privately, I will give you the prices so you can have an idea. Uh, but for my consideration, they are cheaper than the U.S. because I have a lot of cases when the patients refer me the prices they pay in the States. Mm -hmm. And what I can do also is provide you like a little text message mm -hmm. or in a script and I can forward to you the prices and the presentations and you can share it with patients and your audience sure. in some point of this video. Okay, all right, I'll put it in the description. Yeah, and about the last question, I forgot to mention that like a general practitioner doctor that I am, I suggest that the patient at least uh, needs a general control one or twice a year. You can prevent a lot of conditions if you just make a general mm -hmm. consultation and you're not waiting until you start feeling yeah. symptoms. Don't wait until you're sick. Exactly. Uh, preventive medicine, that's what yes. we call it. Okay, good. Uh, what, uh, Doug Friendly asked, what is the availability of Eliquis? And he said, Apaxiban. Uh, uh, Apaxiban in Ecuador. Yeah, we also have that medication, but like I said, I will give you the list okay. so you can maybe in the comments you can share that information and they will know. Okay, does it require yeah. a prescription? Yeah, it requires okay. a prescription. All okay. medications that you use for epilepsy, antidepressant, uh, medication to sleep. A blood thinners, a heart blood pressure medication, they require prescription. And some other conditions, they require special prescription. Mm -hmm. Another one here, Wiggy. <laughs> I got really unique names. I have diver cool name. di diverti diverticulosis. Yeah. Uh, could the doctor address this? I mean, I get you treat for it. I can I treat the question. general condition like another symptoms related with that, but the diverticulosis is a condition into the colon and mm -hmm. the large intestines that if you want to uh, make an inv a less invasive procedure needs to be performed for a gastroenterologist inside an office and with all generally they use anesthesia yeah. and sedation to put the patient to sleep so they could introduce all the uh, machines and all the accessories of the machines and do the procedure like per se. Right. But I can treat the patient, calm the symptoms that might compromise the life of the patient and refer them to the final and definitive attention okay. with the specialist, yes. Okay, all right. Now here's a guy, this is from, from Christopher Tanner from Facebook on I think it was Mark Bradbury's page, I'm not sure, but one of the one of the pages. Some of these questions you've already answered, but I can see here one. Uh, did you cover in your elevator speech where you got your residency? Was that here in Monta? Yeah, I okay. did my right. residency here in two uh, institutions of the government, mm -hmm. of the Public Ministry of Health, we call it MASP. Okay. It's the free uh, assistance for people who can't afford medical assistance or ISS. Mm -hmm. And anyway, we used to deal with all the population, but it's mainly built for this 
people, this part of the people. Yeah. And I worked there for almost seven years. Okay. Uh, part in a primary care emergency room and the other part like in our hospital, which is the Rodriguez Zambrano Hospital, in the emergency room again. So I deal and treat patients with clinical conditions, emergency conditions, um, uh, intermediate intensive care patients. Okay. He also asks, are you associated with any specific hospital or clinic or medical group? No, I have my own practice. I'm not associated with anyone, but like I work for the government and I know a lot of people, I have my connections, so I can refer you and connect you directly with the specialists or the institutions, the facilities, if mm -hmm. you need. Okay, so that kind of answers you. the next question. Do you have admitting privileges to any hospital? I wouldn't call privileges because mm -hmm. it's not like I'm this huge and important person. <laughs> but let's say that people know me, people, there are some specialties they work with me at that point and like a doctor, like any other doctor had all the right to yeah. refer any patient to any institution. Sure, sure. Yeah. Do you have any specialties like geriatrics, diabetes, pediatrics, etc., or are you primarily general practitioner? I am a general practitioner and I have also uh, expertise in holistic medicine, mm -hmm. experience in internal medicine in uh, emergency medicine and intermediate intensive care because I deal with critical patients in the emergency room mm -hmm. but I don't have any specialty the ones that you mentioned there okay so here's a couple good ones all right mm -hmm. uh, what is your biggest challenge in treating patients now keep this Short and sweet, okay? Because I bet My. you, I bet if you're treating expats, I bet you can come up with a lot of challenges. <laughs> well, challenges are on the table all the time, and it's yeah. not only to practice medicine, it's in the whole life. So for me, practice medicine, I really enjoy it because I, I, I like what I do. I, I, I just... It's something that it makes me happy to help people. Uh, I choose this career because I have this, like this special call. Mm -hmm. And I feel deeply and tremendously uh, this joy yeah. Yeah. to provide this assistance to the people, to my patients. Yeah. So I don't see any discomfort or any challenging you know in a wrong way mm -hmm. say it challenges right. like for example one day i just went off gas or yeah. <laughs> i have some some problem with my car or something <laughs> like that but it's challenges that we face every single day in sure. another activity so. sure so what is your current patient load oh that's very that's various hard to answer yeah, that, that I can't say it exactly because it's not the same all the time. Yeah. It has difference between one day and the other. Yeah, now I'm not sure what he means by this, but he says, do you plan to expand your practice? Like maybe hire some other doctors to work with you? Yeah. Or, yeah, okay. I would like to do that in the future mm -hmm. so I can cover more people and maybe help the community in a, mm -hmm. in a big way. Mm -hmm. And then his last question, are you able to offer any type of wellness programs to your patients like weight loss, diabetes management, et cetera, et cetera? Yes. Um, actually, I had a couple experience with some patients that they have metabolic syndrome, and which implies um, diabetes, insulin resistance, high blood pressure, overweight. Mm -hmm. And I've been helping uh, these patients, uh, help these patients with their diet, um, with the blood work, with the assistance, clinical assistance, and I had very good results. Yeah. So every general doctor should have the capacity to deal with that. Yeah, yeah. So George Carasetti asks, is she part of, talking about you, are you part of ISS or only private care? Are there doctors in both? No, I'm not part of the ISS. Yeah. I am a private doctor. Okay. I have my own practice, yeah. Okay. Okay, so on Facebook, and Ronnie Del, Delaroy, Del, Delaray, I met him not too long ago. This is a good one here. <laughs> uh, is there any way to get CBD oil on prescription down there? Oh, you can buy CBD oil without a prescription here. Not 
that openly, mm. but we we are not allowed yet to okay. script in a prescription okay. like it happens in the US. Yeah. But uh, you know you can go to Fibeca or uh, whatever other store and they sell CBD oil obviously with the T without the THC. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the drug. It's not Beer legally works, to to the to sell the psychoactive drug. So I want to be very clear on this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just the CBD. It's not the yeah. it's not the pot. Not pot. No pot. No. I'm waiting for somebody to say, "Where can I get pot?" <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know where you can buy some beer. Uh, private message somebody sent me. Good morning, Don. I was so excited to see that you are going to interview Dr. Gladys next time. She is also my doctor as of a few weeks ago. I had a stomach infection. She came to my apartment, did an exam, ordered blood work, and then determined the right treatment. In a day or two, I was feeling back to normal. Dr. Gladys is awesome. Thank with you. With an exclamation point. Uh, anyway, I do have a question for your interview with her. For people who... Here was sleep apnea. Oh, we already covered this. What are the options for getting CPAP machine? We've already covered this. I'm sorry. We covered this um, I can also forward you the contact of the people who sell those machines and they mm -hmm. even gave maintenance to those machines. So yeah. you can access to that and maybe could be cheaper if you compare it with the prices outside, but it's not like an easy thing mm -hmm. to buy i want to be clear with this it's not like it's extremely cheaper but it might be kind of a little cheaper mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that can compare with the other countries i mean okay and and yeah yeah i i know a couple of people who who sell this equipment and they also uh, have accessories on something that you might need to yeah okay change. so send her an email uh get her email out of the description a lot of people don't look at the description. I don't understand why, but yeah. read the description because uh, her email will be in there. And then you'll, you'll, I, he didn't leave a name, so I don't know who we're talking to, but anyway. <laughs> All right, so uh, this person came in a private email, Rick Sullenberger. Uh, Hi, Don, the family and I enjoy your video so much. Well, of course, who doesn't? Uh, <laughs> You're all seeing information. Uh, so don't let me bring up that 100% rule. I have a new rule that everybody has to watch 100% of my videos. Somebody told me the other day they watch 99% of my videos. Wow. What's up with that? It needs to be 100%, okay? <laughs> That's 100% rule. All right, but anyway, uh, <laughs> you're all seeing information that's helped us with, without, with our decision on moving to Ecuador. So here's a few questions. Uh, my stepdaughter suffers from Drabert syndrome. Yeah. Drabert syndrome, which is a form of debilitating epilepsy. Are the doctors in the area, Monta or Cuenca, able to do her maintenance checkups and prescribe medication like Depakote? Yeah, that's Epi a medication mm -hmm. for the epilepsy. Okay, all right. So you can treat it, right? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, we have neurologists here and with a uh, prescription, um, I can help to refill the medications after they have mm -hmm. the first consultation and the following with yeah. the specialist because that's how medicine works in this country. Yeah, and it's probably, again, we've, we've said this before, bring your medical records with you and yeah. let you see the, the whole history. Yeah, but yeah, the neurologists, the story, the, inside the training of the neurologist specialist, it's the epilepsy and mm -hmm. other neurological conditions. Yeah. He said, I think I'm wondering if it's possible they could maybe raise her quality of life. I'm sure that life in Ecuador would help with that alone, talking about the, his stepdaughter. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly could give it a try, right? Yeah. So, and the second question, I am type 2 diabetic. I don't get the good meds in the U.S. that can afford $700 to $900 a month for the once, I, once a day injections. Are my options any better there here in Ecuador? I know the walking in food will. So what do you think about that? Type two diabetic, can you get the, the, the type of I would of like to know use? what kind of injections are you receiving? Yeah. So then I can let you know for sure if we have similar things here. But yeah, we got a bunch of options. Okay, email and her. Email her. It might be cheaper than that. Yeah. Uh, Joanne, hi Joanne, jo I hear from Joanne often. Uh, it looks as if a lot of people already asked day-to-day -day questions, but what about more serious surgeries like joint replacement, 
cardiac bypass surgery. Also, is dialysis readily available there? Cataract surgery. Is oxygen therapy available for COPD patients? Uh, let's stop there, and I'll ask you the other questions. Yeah. Answer these first ones. Let's there. do one, yeah. <laughs> and then we can what do the other. What about the serious surgeries like joint replacement and cardiac bypass? Yeah, we have here um, traumatologists or orthopedic surgeons. They can solve that and in the private system and also in the public system. If you want it fast, you might need to go with the private insurance and through that, I mean. So you wouldn't have some covering that way mm -hmm. or you can use also the IESS or um, the other system, which is the MASP, our general hospital, like mm -hmm. per se. Um, and about the cardiac situations, the heart situations, we have a very big clinic here. The owner is a cardiologist, very famous, and he provides a lot of specialists inside to the building. They are trained and prepared here and outside of the country and in those different sub-specialities, like sub-divisions of the cardiologists yeah. speaking. I, I actually know somebody that came here, I think you know her. Mm -hmm who went to Cardio Central. Yes. And they had a checkup and they did a stint <laughs> that that day or Yeah, and that's you know, you know like, very fast. Yeah. And he that case, in that case she had uh, the IESS. Yeah. And she get through that she got and in. through also yeah. there's some other people that get through from their private insurance. And we also have the Omni Hospital, Kennedy Wyakill Clinic. In Quito, we have the Metropolitan Clinic. So we have very good facilities and yeah. amazing doctors. I can't say the yeah. contrary because we got our medical staff is amazing. Yeah. What about dialysis? Dialysis we have uh, here in Manabí. We have Metro Dial and we have also Manadialysis. And they both also work with the public system with the special convenience and also privately. Okay. Cataract surgery. People Catholic, Catholic, yes, surgery? we yeah. have different clinics, ophthalmological clinics. We have one near over here, Instituto de la Visión. Mm -hmm. And in Puerto Viejo, we have also a, 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 an organization who performs surgeries even for free for mm -hmm. special people. And in Guayaquil, in Cuenca, in Quito, around the country, we have nice facilities to yeah. those types of surgeries too. Yeah, Special people like YouTubers? Yeah. Don Shader? Yeah, yeah. Don Shader. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about oxygen therapy available for COPD patients? Every single facility in this country must contain oxygen stand yeah. because that's part of the basic treatment inside the emergency room. Yeah. So our hospital has it, clinics has it too, and we also have enterprise like OxyGas or any others when you can buy your own your own oxygen tank and you can refill it the times you need it okay and it's not it is an accessible price so. yeah john turner this is question number 31 believe it or not uh some questions for the good doctor once about insurance i'll save that for doc mm -hmm. for for the uh thursday interview but he asked me can one get dexalent 60 milligram dexalent yes in ecuador can you get supplies for the phillips re Respironix, yeah, yeah we have uh, we have ventilator Phoenix, okay. Philips, and we have also CPAPs and other equipment from that brand. And okay. yeah, they, the hospitals, they have the contacts because, or the clinics, for example, Clinica del Sol, they yeah. used to have uh, one of those ventilators, and in other clinics around the city and around the, the, the country. So they used to have the suppliers, the contact mm -hmm. people, the technicians who manage and fix or replace accessories okay. of those machines. Okay. All right. And John, I'll answer your question about TRICARE, uh, when I'll save that for uh, Blue Box Insurance, okay? Here's some good questions here. Ron Amadio said, does Monta have any facilities to perform CT scans and PET scans? Or would you have to go to a larger city? And also MRI scans. We have all of that. We have En Losa in Puerto Viejo. We also have Clinica del Sol here and Cardio Centro mm -hmm. too. And you also got uh, another one, bigger ones, mm -hmm. uh, machines with the last technology in Quito, in Guayaquil, in, in Cuenca too. So yeah. we have around the country. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is the cost for a doctor's home visit? Well, I can speak for my own. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say all their prices, but generally when I uh, visit... I've told, I've told everybody so uh, yeah, yeah, generally when I see a patient inside Manta, because it's where I live, it's mm. $60. Okay. And outside the city, it, they obviously they, the price is going to change because of another expenses travel, again in the middle. Yeah, you have to travel. And, yeah. mm -hmm. And that would be also depending on what type of services the patient required. Mm -hmm. If it's a general consultation or if it's a specialty, if it's an emergency, with, because I am a 24-7 doctor too, so I also i am on call if yeah. there's an emergency. He also asked, what is the doctor's area of specialty? Well, we've already pretty much covered that. Your general practice. Yeah, I'm a general uh, practitioner. Yeah. Are there any doctors in Montreal that have homeopathic practices? Yeah, we have homeopathic doctors. We have one, uh, it's very near from your house, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he came uh, every week or every other night. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are some contacts of him I can provide you. Yeah. The contact, maybe find you the contact and you can make an appointment if okay. you want. He also asked, do you know when the new hospital mantra will be fully operational and will it have many different areas of specialists? Well, our what, what? I mean, they refer to the Rodriguez Manta Hospital, the, the one mm -hmm. that I used to work two years ago. Yeah. And yeah, this hospital was in, uh, it was, they were building it again. Okay. Because he, it, the, yeah. this facility, uh, for some conditions, the government decides to build the hospital per mm -hmm. se again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I heard that it might be uh, finished in, at the end of this year or um, at the beginning of the next, next year. But that's not an official announcement. So maybe you guys should have to wait until it's on the news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, does Ecuador have most brand name drugs or would you have to rely on generics? I think I could answer that question. We but, got generics yeah. and commercial brands. So yeah. if generics is very popular. Yeah, and here, generics yeah. are very popular and are very cheap to mm -hmm. compare with the um, but we also have, you know, interesting things in the pharmacies. Uh, some pharmacies they have a special convenience with um, with the private insurance, so they have these days when they offer you a percentage of discounts. Mm -hmm. One day is 40% less, 50% less, 20% less, or they have like every month this promotion, like you can buy one box and you have one more for free if you have high blood pressure. So it's very interesting and we got a lot of pharmacies from with different options to okay. the cheapest and to the expenses. Yeah. Here's a good one. Uh, are there medical practices that offer plasma enriched injections as well as stem cell injections? And what is your medical opinion on their efficacy? Okay, so the traumatologists here and the orthopedics, they use a lot of plasma and PRP treatment to the joints. When you have you know, a condition on the knees or maybe any situation, that's very, uh, very common here. I am agree with that, but because actually you're using something with is in your body to develop another part, to increase the production or to help your body with something it's on you. You're not using an external thing. And there's a lot of studies that the, the stem cells and all the benefits, those therapies, the uh, viscous supplementation is the name. But it's not only used in traumatologists, it's used in another type of therapies and specialists. So that depends what you're looking for or for what you want to use it. Because this is even used to cos in cosmetology. Mm -hmm. So oh, it wow. has a lot of uses, a lot of benefits, more benefits than contradictory things. Mm -hmm. But we also have people in Guayaquil I mean, uh, in big cities that they have more expertise dealing with this type of treatments, hematologies, and especially they know exactly how to extract the stem cells and how to introduce it in your body. Okay. It has to be done for a specialist, by the way. Yeah. Let's see, Jaylen Burton said, my question related to me being a kidney transplant recipient, that was 8-27-2020, 
Does Monta have nephro nephrologies? nephrologies? Yeah. yeah, we have specialists on on the kidneys. Okay. When it, that's exactly what you were asking, though, and we have yeah. very good ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And does Monta have labs that can run tests like my Prograph level? Yeah. Okay. Would it be possible to get a healthcare plan given this matter? I'd ask that for yeah, you. that's for Blue Block Blue Box again yeah. because that depends. They have different policies according to diseases. Yeah. If it's So, Mickey says, uh, oh, well, Dr. Garcia, do primary care physicians in Ecuador manage patients' chronic sinus infections, or is that area of care managed by specialists in ear, nose, and throat conditions? She has another question here. Would, would, you can answer that one. Uh, yeah, for uh, this question, my answer will be that yes and no. Okay. So, if it's a regular or a minor sinusitis, it's not a major infection, which involves any obstruction, any or requires a special procedure, it can be treated for a general physician. But if it's not, the smartest thing will be to be See to a receive a special attention, yeah. special attention. Are physicians willing to prescribe antibiotics to patients who need them for recovery from bacterial infections? Doctors I've encountered in USA are reluctant to prescribe antibiotics for bacterial infections, no matter how ill the patient is. I know that you have given me antibiotics for a bacterial infection on my legs. Yeah, but I so. always evaluate the patient yeah. because not everything in healthcare it's antibiotics. Mm -hmm. And I I I want to make this uh, try to conscious moment that please don't self medicate. Yeah. And try to see, try to find the assistance of a doctor before to take any medication because because they have side effects. Yeah. And you need, you need a diagnosis, at least um, a presentive diagnosis, uh, or maybe some type or idea that what is the microorganism which is provoking the infection, and because the antibiotics had a lot of side effects too, yeah. like any other drug. Yeah. Uh, Ken has a potential showstopper for moving internationally is the ready and economical availability of Vopressa eye drops. Yes. It's required for the rest of my life, or rest of life. He said conditions of glaucoma, two medications needed daily to keep eye pressure low to prevent loss of vision. So he's, and he, he wrote let, Latanopre, yeah. Latanopros. Yeah. Yes, we have both. We have that. Okay. All right. So you have them both. So they're both readily available here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Johnny Kuhn wrote, hi Johnny, uh, Johnny is a, a, a lady, oh, really? yeah, she was, I met her not too long ago, she came here. That's a cool husband. name. Yeah, it is. See how it's spelled? It's spelled a little different. And Johnny. Yeah, yeah. Hi Don, I can't think of so many questions at this point, but once I move down, I'm probably full, full of them. Once you pick a primary care doctor, will they refer you to specialists as needed? Yes, of course. Of course. Yeah. And then what's, is WhatsApp the best way to make an appointment with your doctor? I say so. Well, what <laughs> yeah. do you think? <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. I, I tell you, not to get too far off subject, but if you're going to move to just any foreign country outside of the United States, you better get WhatsApp and put it on your phone. Tell all your friends and family back home to have WhatsApp because you're going to use it as your primary method of communication here. It's just the way it is. Uh, is preventive care common, such as yearly physical lab work, <laughs> Mammogram, yeah, and I think you've already answered that. Can you get mammograms here? I guess yes. they do, yeah. Why here not? in Manta? Yeah. yeah, or here in Ecuador. Right? Uh, yeah, in Ecuador, but if you want to know if if in Manta we have that, we have. Yeah. But we all have also the same around the country, in yeah. other parts of the country. Keith says, can she provide any broader information on the number and proportion of docs in Ecuador that make house calls? Now, I'll tell you the reason, I, I think that's a good question, because when I was in Cuenca, mm -hmm. I called a doctor up there because of the condition that I, well, I was dealing with the altitude sickness. And I kind of got the impression that he really didn't want to do a house call. That's he, not something that doctors prefer to do. I think the most comfortable environment for doctors here is just treat the patients into the office, which is good. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm agreeing, I respect. But in my personal opinion I like to provide my patients the enough options that I can do yeah so basically for the pandemia 
I decide to offer my services like a mobile doctor mm -hmm. for saying somehow but it's the personal way that I wanted to manage my practice so that's not an obligation here but lately I've been seeing a couple doctors trying to offer also this service mm -hmm. plus the assistance in the, in the office but yeah it's not that common here yeah so the language barrier he, he's touching on that too he's saying what portion of them are designated as speaking English I mean it's very low it's very a very low, low portion uh, usually patients use translators into the office yeah. or interpreters or Sometimes I offer this that service only medically speaking. I mean, mm. for example, if you hire me like your uh, translator, I, I'm gonna go like your head doctor. So I'm mm. gonna share your medical history with the doctor, and like I speak your same language, I'm gonna be. I want. I'm gonna make sure that you would receive exactly what you want and need according what I previously checked on you. Mm -hmm. But uh, sometimes you can also hire a normal uh, translator to just try to get in this point that you will be able to understand what the doctor is trying to tell you and what you are trying to communicate with the mm -hmm. physician. Yeah, but it, it's, it's quite hard here. Yeah, well, I know that when I went to a doctor, a dermatologist, he had an interpreter on the phone with him mm -hmm. that spoke English for me. I don't think that's... Um, that something can interrupt mm -hmm. a communication with the patient because right now you can use Google Translator but yeah. sometimes it's not that um, that specifically uh, sometimes it's very literally yeah yeah and we, in, if you're trying to communicate something in a slang proper slang of your country mm -hmm. or it's another descent of you're trying to say it, so yeah but you got those choices too. You can decide sure. which one is best for you. Uh, come here and get you an Ecuadorian girlfriend that speaks mm -hmm. Spanish and <laughs> let her go to the doctor with you. I've done that. Well, you don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said, he also asked, are there German or French speaking doctors and other languages here? Well, that's even more difficult yeah. because the language is all, the English is already a yeah. huge problem here and so German there must be mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it's not but it's like it's where yeah. it's where compared to the English though maybe. maybe in the bigger cities like Quito yeah uh, well that I forgot to tell you guys that in Quito and in Cuenca you might find like the majority of the physicians and people they speak English yeah. because they have more contact with foreign people they the culture is different so they used to have a a sooner education and another languages yeah and English is involved in that too yeah all right see and he says and finally has she acquired all of her education in Monta you got all your education yeah in Monta, I did right? all my okay. education here yes. I'd be interested to know how common that is and is it common for nationals to have so education in the United States, I think we pretty much already answered that. Yeah, it He's, happens. Yeah. It's not that common, but it happens. Yeah. He says, why or how is Ecuador's medical care rated so high? Google says Bloomberg recently rated Ecuador as having the 20th most efficient healthcare system among advanced economies, uh, while the U.S. ranked near the bottom at 46th place. Perhaps that can lead to a big to lead to a question as to what she likes best about her job. I mean, that's you've kind of touched on that. The, the quality of healthcare in, in Ecuador is superior I, I, to a lot of countries, in my opinion. I also think it's far superior to the quality of healthcare in the United States. And even though I came from there, but it sucks it, to go to the doctor. There, the first thing they want to know about you is what kind of insurance you have. You know, is, instead of, uh, you know, when are you going to be home? I can come by and see you, you know. So I think you've expressed your opinion that you think that the health, not just speaking for yourself, but for the medical industry in Ecuador itself, is really good. Yeah, we're not really perfect really because nobody is perfect. No. I don't want to let that clear. But uh, we care about patients mm -hmm. we care about health care it's going to be maybe people that they don't because that happens in everywhere but i mean our government our laws are very strong 
so they really protect customers and they focus a lot of the health care so we got a lot of mistakes mm -hmm. we are not perfect again but we try to do the best we can with the resources we have yeah yeah mm -hmm. so i guess that in all other countries they got a, a a very good technology and i can't just speak badly about any other country because i never had the experience to use those systems but yeah. i can talk about my system and it's pretty good yeah Okay, so this question here by Pedro Blanco. Pedro, I'm going to ask that you send this question to Dr. Garcia in an email because uh, this is a rather lengthy question and we're going to run out of time here before long. And so if you don't mind, Pedro, uh, and Pedro is a good guy. I've, I've talked to him several times and he's got a lot of stuff here to talk about. And I think... Let you know, me just take it. A deep, oh, okay. Yeah, see, it goes all the way from here down to here. That's all his question. Yeah, it seems like it's some experience that he had. And yeah. So I'm, I'm going to ask you to send her an email on that. Just copy this, and or I can copy it and send it to her for you, and uh, and I'll and I have your email address, so I'll just I'll just take care of it for you. Okay, I'll send it to you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's it questions are all answered I hope we answered everything I mean I Interesting. there are some people that have have written I, I cut cut off questions at a, a recent point where I thought it was more than we would be able to handle in one session uh, we should probably do this again sometime maybe sure. this time next year you know or in six months because mm -hmm. so many things can change and so many people are coming and going and Healthcare is a big, big topic, you know, especially for expats that are coming here. I know that when I came here, I was totally in the dark about it. I mean, I, all I had to go by was what some other YouTubers told me about, you know, and then I, I didn't really I get to see what it's like until I actually got sick and called you and you came out and took care of me. So I uh, thank you for your time. And, You're welcome. Thank uh, you for having I'm, me. I want to tell everybody that please get her email address and take a note of her contact information and when you get here book an appointment with her get that physical done bring your medical records with you so that you can share your history with her and she won't be working in the dark like she did with me because I, I brought you nothing except a bad cold so, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway thanks for watching we will see you guys on the next one the next video is going to be Thursday it's going to be the interview with Blue Box Insurance, and we'll see you then. I've been known a few times in the past to offer mammograms for free. Yeah, they used to have some campaigns or they are very cheaper, like mm -hmm. $10, $20. I'm talking about I do it myself. Ah! So. <laughs>